it's worth mentioning that this naming strategy isn't just something they've geared to kind of sell one unit over another or try to upsell you the next device. It's designed to let you know that these devices have a certain target, a demographic, an audience, basically an ideal user. Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about Synology NAS. More precisely I want to talk about the range about, I don't know, I think, I think it was back in September, October 2017, I did a video about comparing the different kinds of Synology NAS. Their range is actually surprisingly intuitive for such a complex subject. Synology have done a very good job of managing to take all of their devices and put them in a nice family tree. They've got them all the way through with devices getting gradually more powerful and more memory and more powerful CPUs and connections as you go. And with that, they've also got a naming strategy that goes a long line with their product. So what I wanted to do today is revisit this subject from a couple of years ago so I can really focus on which products are the best for you? Because when you're buying a Synology NAS, be it in the old series or some of the new generation of devices that are arriving at the end of 2019, it's worth mentioning that this naming strategy isn't just something they've geared to kind of sell one unit over another or try to upsell you the next device. It's designed to let you know that these devices have a certain target, a demographic, an audience, basically an ideal user. So I'm going to make my way through every single naming convention from Synology one by one, mention some of the products, but also help you understand which one is best for your user case scenario. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's go for the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. Let's go for the lowest. That is the SE series. To this day, I don't know what the letters SE stand for. I can tell you right now, though, these NASes, and you, I don't even think there is a new one at the moment, the last one being the 216 SE, are designed to be the lowest powers NAS out there. It's designed to give you an entry point. Now, the SE, if it has been retired, I'm not sure, maybe it will come back. The last generation 216 SE had a single core 800 megahertz CPU and a quarter of a gig of memory. It was painful. It had RAID, but it barely could do anything. If you are going to buy an SE NAS, you are doing this because what you want is a NAS where you're not in a rush. The read and write performance of an SE NAS is bloody awful. I do not recommend going for it in pretty much any context. In fact, I'm only including it in this video just because to cover all the bases. But do you know what? I'll say it. Don't buy an SE NAS unless they upgrade that CPU in some way or form to an ARM 3064 bit or a dual core in the next generation of it. Avoid like the plague. Next, we'll talk about the real entry point into Synology NAS. I'm, of course, talking about the J series. Now, once again, I still don't know what the J stands for. I'm going to go with just enough. Now, the J series at the moment spans the DS218J, the 418J, and the 119J. Now, what all of these NASs have in common is the fact that they give you a base level of hardware to get the minimum done. Things like the LNA media streaming, um, very, very low level surveillance and backups. But what's crucial across these devices is that you can't do many of these things at the same time. Uh, with the 119J being a particular example of very low power access to Synology's DSM software, DSM 6.2, in a much more streamlined fashion. But if you are looking for a NAS, your first NAS, your budget is tight, you're not looking to spend a great deal of money, and you are just trying to get a feel for this industry, get an idea of what it will be like to have your own private cloud as an alternative to Dropbox and Google Drive and all that like, the J series is where you begin. It's very, very affordable. It gives you access to 30, maybe 40% of Synology's own apps, as well as supporting multiple third-party apps as well. And in the case of the 218J, Although you haven't got access to something like Plex on that one, the 418J will give it to you. Also remember that in the larger variants, that two bay, the 218J and the 418J, you don't have to fully populate them. You can just stick one drive in and add as you go. And in fact, that 418J has got a pretty decent dual-core Realtek CPU inside the RTD1293. So the 418J is actually not a terrible four-bay NAS, or I believe arriving at somewhere around the 300 quid mark. Don't quote me, hopefully it's on screen. Somewhat embarrassingly, in the post-edit, I realised I didn't actually discuss the Play series enough, so I thought I'd add this insert right now. Hello from the future. So, 
there's also the Synology Play series. Now, the Synology Play series is one that's been around for a long time, but I think a number of users that have got used to the Synology range will agree that the Play range got slightly watered down after something like the DS214 Play. You used to have things like SD card readers and stuff like that, but now the current series of Play arrives in the 218 Play and the 418 Play, both of which supporting 4K transcoding, um, but both of them going about it a very different way. The 218 Play featuring one of those Realtek CPUs, so RTD1296 64-bit ARM, and that arrives with one gig of DDR4 memory, which is quite good and it will transcode 4K, but in stuff like Plex, it will struggle that little two bay. And compared to its previous generations of Play Series NAS, it's actually a little bit disappointing, whereas the four bay, things really get turned around. The DS418 Play is that great Intel-powered dual-core J3355 CPU, and that Play series NAS can support things like Play and 4K transcoding um, outside of Plex, and as well as 1080p transcoding being more than possible on that CPU. But in Plex, there's going to be slightly denser files that may struggle on that, and that's where I mean about the Play series being very focused towards multimedia. It's designed for people where watching and enjoying media in that way is their NAS priority. It still supports a number of the key features from Synology, from SHR to BTRFS on both of them, but there's still no denying that in terms of the heritage that has gone behind in the previous units in the Play series, those Play units do seem, the current gen, just a little below par compared with the predecessors and will make you move towards that Plus series. Maybe 2020 will see something different, but moving on. Now, Moving forward from the J series, this is where what you want is the base level access to all of the Synology applications, but you don't want to pay through the nose. You're not considering things like 4K, and what you're looking for is a nice, straightforward bit of um, storage that, that can act as a network cloud and an internet cloud. Now, the basically the standard series is identified by the fact it has no identification. I'm talking about things like the DS118 or the 218 eight or the 418 they've got no prefix there banged on the end or postfix depending on how you want to say that but these are the devices that arrive with general support so these are the devices um currently arriving with realtek based cpus almost exclusively and that's the 64-bit arm rtd1296 these devices arriving with either one or two gig of ddr4 memory give you a nice base access to things like 4K transcoding, though not in Plex. Plex is now supported on these devices. They support Synology Moments, Synology Hybrid RAID. They arrive with support of all of these different things and indeed now arrive with BTRFS and that's where things start getting interesting because up to that point, all the NASes we've talked about feature EXT4 as their operating system. In this area, thanks to that hardware they've got in the latest generation of um, standard series NAS, these devices arrive with BTRF, um, which has like um, cell file healing, um, background integrity checks, and faster and easier snapshots. But on top of that, these devices support all of the next tier of Synology apps. Again, Synology Drive, Synology Office, Synology Moments, Synology Mail, Synology Chat. These are the devices that enter into that realm. But there's still no denying it. They are still a little bit more cost effective and indeed value uh, than a number of bigger and better devices to come. Now, I, you may have noticed I've skipped a gen there technically, and that's known as the Slim. The Slim series is a series of devices that is geared towards not only you know compact nature, but also featuring two and a half inch media and low energy consumption, low noise, um, just low heat generation, and effectively compact NAS that you can kind of hide away maybe in your attic or if you work on a houseboat or just somewhere where power is limited or space is limited. Now the Slim series, I'm not really skipping them so much as it's pretty obvious what their target demographic is. Currently it's the DS416 Slim and the DS419 Slim. There's a new one coming out, the DS620 Slim, a lovely little six bay Intel based NAS, which is a huge leap forward. I'm not going to talk about that too much in this video because it's not released, but when it does come very, very soon, that I'm going to do a whole host of videos on that one. Now, after Slim, we can go into probably the most popular series of NAS in desktop form out there, although this does, of course, 
um, cover non-desktop 2 in the rack mount area of rack station, I want to talk about the Plus series. Now, Synology will almost certainly refer to these devices as their flagship range. These are devices where you've got the, the latest generation of dual and quad-core Intel-based CPUs at the moment. They're up to the J series, the J3355 and the J3455, as well as business-enabled devices in um, um, 6 and 8 bays that arrive with Intel Atom-based processors, the C3538. These are devices that support, I, I would say, at least 80 to 85 percent of Synology's first-party apps, all of the ones that we've talked about, but also including Active Backups um, Suite, Synology High Availability, um, full coverage of Docker, and surveillance station around 25 to 40 cameras, although they all arrive with two camera licenses. On top of that, things like Plex Media Server will run pretty well on these devices, although not top end, still pretty well. They will transcode 1080p on almost all of these devices, but 4K transcoding may be limited, and you may need to go for some of the devices like the 918 Plus that are more geared towards that, with hardware transcoding in Plex being something supported with a Plex Pass. Now, all of these devices mentioned either arrive with 4 gigabit LAN or 2 um, two gigabit, I'm sorry, four gigabit slot, so four individual one GBEs or two individual one GBEs. But in the case of the 1618 and 1819 plus and the 1817 and all of those devices, these devices also arrive with PCIe upgradability for things like 10 GBE. Now the trade-off on the smaller generation of pluses like the 918 plus and the 1019 plus, they've got NVMe SSD cache bays. This is the ability to add storage that enables caching and really speeds up these internal operations. Overall, what that means is if you're looking to buy a NAS with great internal performance or great external performance, the Plus series is where you have to look because the Plus series is the one that arrives with improved internal processors and better memory options and memory expandability, something that all of the devices behind us that we've just talked about do not have give you much more future proofing also it's worth mentioning that the plus series has three years of warranty whereas everything we've talked up to and uh, talked about until now all have two years so that's part of that plus series package it's about future proofing and performance now so if that's something that interests you you shouldn't really be looking at the slim the j the se and the standard you need to start at the plus range now after this things start getting a bit enterprisey with something called the XS series. Now, XS series is designed at business. It's designed at enterprise. If you think about things like um, data centers, widespread surveillance use, virtual machines, um, large file hosting um, for off-site users, that kind of thing, these are the devices that support 100% of the Synology applications. These are devices that arrive with full support of all of those abilities that Synology promised so hard. Normally arriving with Xeon-based CPUs, Pentium-based CPUs, um, or even more powerful in some cases, you know, six and eight core uh, based processors. These are ones where things like high availability will come into it. These are the ones where um, multiple PCIe slots mean that you can add things like 10 GBE, 25 GBE, 40 GBE and communication between these servers and multiple servers in enormous surface areas. On top of that, the XS series also arrives with five years of warranty along with several years of Synology's replacement service. Um, this, is the area, this is the area where if you are in one of those regions supported, if your device has any kind of fault or breakdown, you can have a swift turnaround next day, next working business day, to get a new server out to you. In fact, some regions, not all of them, and that's worth mentioning very heavily there, also have the Synology Premium service, which is a 24-7 contact, and basically um, a hand-holding business um, service included with it. But once again, only some select regions have that at this current time. Um, now, 
Beyond that, there are other things that the XS series can do. We talked about dual active controller based NASes. We've NASes that have got two controllers inside that support one another in case of failure or just to add the extra oomph of power. Or you've got SAS based devices, the SA series, and these are ones with insane processors of the very latest generation and flash station will come afterwards. But these um, enterprise and XS level devices are the ones where you are a business that wants at least five to ten years of storage. These will give that to you and the performance will not let you down. And also if you're using third party applications to communicate and get your data back and forth, these are the ones for you too. And that does go for AI applications or indeed anything where IOPS is key and you need IOPS in the six figures. Now, talking about IOPS, I said I'd mention it, let's go there, the Flash series. Flash station are devices that are geared primarily towards insanely fast speeds. Now, when you look at SSDs, the idea of an SSD and its appeal is that uh, a solid state drive gives you the speed that a mechanical hard drive doesn't because it's designed with lots of little NAND chips that all the data is there on a single SSD to pull the data from and that's why the performance is a great deal better because of the lack of moving parts and the indexing system that the NAND chips have that's much faster to read. Flash station is that logic on a much bigger scale. It's multiple SSDs where um, a flash array is created where you have one area of insanely fast storage with individual SSDs working in the comparative sense as the way the individual NAND chips work on a single SSD. Needless to say, the speed these devices give you is phenomenal with multiple SSD, um, uh, SSD RAID configurations inside and actual, actual SSD specialized RAIDs like F1 that allow you to create a far more reliable SSD RAID array. Now, there isn't support of NVMe or U2 SSDs right now in that range, but I do believe it's right around the corner and I'm surprised we haven't got it already. Now, on top of that, you could of course add 10 GPE, 25 GPE, 40 GPE to get that insane throughput. And of course, Synology do have a running promotion right now at the time of recording where you can contact them and if you are a business that's considering moving into that flash station area, you can contact them for an arranged loan of a device with SSDs inside. And don't get me wrong, obviously it's judged on a case by case basis. That is an option that's open to you and I do recommend you check that out. If you are a company working in rendering and um, uh, field of creation areas like AI, where you need to create these engines that can simulate certain uh, environmental values, these things will give that to you, both with Synology's own software and of course support those popular third party applications for PC and Mac that do this. Now, above and beyond that, there are a few other devices left, you know, within their product family range. You've got things like the cards, the 10 GBE series that have got their own naming conventions. On top of that, things like RP, redundant power supply, and of course, surveillance based devices like the MVR series, which is a series of NAS devices that feature um, HDMI output that works just to support that surveillance station mode. You've got VHS, which um, and the visual station, I should say, the v visual station range of devices, the VS, these are the ones that give you a much more compact version of that MVR, but can also be deployed in an environment that's very, very expandable. They've got lots of user case scenarios that I recommend you check out there. And then finally, you've got things like the DVA, which right now consists of one device. The DVA, Deep Video Analytics, is a GPU card enabled NAND. It's a four bay with an NVIDIA card inside, which enables another tier of surveillance that's AI supported that isn't just about recording footage and seeing movement, it's about that footage and how it's interpreted. So stuff like identifying people, vehicles, plants, things, bags, and having censored triggers that act accordingly within those preset value, uh, values. Now, above and beyond that, that's pretty much it for the Synology range. Yes, there's some routers and stuff like that, but for now, I think I'm gonna wrap things up there. If you are looking for a Synology NAS, hopefully this video has helped you identify the right one for you. It has been vague, somehow vague, and yet 16, 17 minutes long, but 
I would recommend going into the comments to some of the links to both NAS Compares and SPAN that will tell you more about the available products, how they cater to you and the best prices to get for them. Because let's face it, that's very, very important for a number of us. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you on the next video. I'm going to be covering more and more product ranges within more and more NAS brands. If you've got any questions or something I missed, maybe I missed something out in the Sonology range, I look forward to you telling me. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.